<laughs> Hello again from Berkshire Guitar Amplifiers in Reading, England. On the bench today we have a uh, supersonic, Fender supersonic tube amp and what I'm going to show you today is how to bias this amp. So I'm going to take the chassis out, get it up on the bench and then I'll rejoin you. I've got the chassis out now and up on the bench so let me show you the setup that I'm going to use to measure the bias on this amplifier. Here are our output tubes. I have two bias meters one on each tube. Um, you only need to measure the bias on one tube if you have a closely matched set. But I always like to just have a look at what's going on on each valve and it saves me having to swap the meter over from valve to valve. So you will need a bias meter to set up this amplifier. Um, these are about a hundred dollars from hundred pounds or hundred euros. Uh, all of um, similar amounts from Euro tubes. I like their bias meters very much. You can read off the plate voltage and the uh, and the plate current on the meter. So just to look at these meters, plate voltage is 470. It's interesting. It measures slightly differently on each one. 475 roughly, and on this valve it's 12.8 milliamps. I've got the bias turned right down, and on this valve it's 15 milliamps. Again, I've got the bias turned right down. The correct bias for um, for this plate voltage is uh, about 40 milliamps. So let me show you how we're going to adjust that. And over on the amplifier here, what we're interested in is this pot here. So increasing or turning clockwise the pot increases the current and turning it anti-clockwise decreases it. So I'm going to turn this clockwise as we watch the bias meters. So it's the top meter to watch. In this case I'm turning up the blue pot now and you can see the bias is increasing. I'm aiming for 40 milliamps and now I'm maxed out on the pot so we have 32 milliamps on one valve, 28 on the other. What that means is they're not a closely matched pair but that's good enough I wouldn't worry about that but we don't have en enough travel on our bias pot so let me show you what to do if that happens to you what you're going to have to do is to fiddle around with this resistor I'm pointing to here the middle of these three are 155 to increase the bias current, which is what we want to do, I need to decrease the value of that resistor. And that's good news really, because all I need to do is to tack another resistor across it in parallel, decreasing the value. One way you can do that is to put some croc clips on and then um, swap out, hot swap some resistor values um, until you get what you want. This resistor looks to be 51k so I would start with 100k across there and see what happens. Now I have another secret weapon here which I'll show you which is my decade resistance box. <coughs> this allows you to dial in any value of resistor that you want. So I'm going to crock clip that across the uh, R155 then we're going to dial in some values and see if we can get this bias current up to about 40 milliamps. Here we go, I've got my crock clips across R155. They're going to the resistance decade box. At the moment I've got 500k, which is a very high resistor, in parallel across that 155. So that shouldn't have that much effect and indeed it doesn't. We're up to 35 and 33. So now I'm going to just reduce this down to you know, 400k, see what that does, 300k, it's creeping up, look, 36, 35, 200k, 38, 37, I suspect 100k will do it, yep, 100k, 
Um, and maybe that's just a little bit hot. Let's go back to 200k. Let's put in. Um, let's put 100. Let's put 150k in. There we go. 150k. And I'm a bit happier with that. That's 40 milliamps, give or take. So I'm now going to solder a 150k resistor across R155 and then we'll recheck the bias to make sure I've done the job correctly. I hope you can see there I've soldered that 150k across the existing R155. All that now remains is to turn the amp on and see whether the bias current settles at about 40 milliamps. Tubes are warming up, current is starting to be drawn. Plate voltage is dropping because of course it's being loaded by the current being pulled through the valve, so you would expect to see the plate voltage drop. Coming up nicely, 36. I can already tell this is going to be just perfect. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now let me show you something else on this amp in case you don't have a bias meter because I've just noticed that there are two 1 ohm resistors there. Where are they? There's one there, that big power resistor, and there's one there. And I'm guessing that those 1 ohm resistors are sitting in the cathodes of the power valves to allow you to measure bias current across them. Um, I'll check that now and what I will do is put a multimeter across those set on, a, on, on one of them set on a 200 millivolt scale. And if that's a 1 ohm resistor I would expect to measure if there's say 40 milliamps going through that resistor I'd expect to measure 40 millivolts on my multimeter. So let's hook up the multimeter and see if that's true. Well, here we are. I've um, hooked up my two crock leads to one of the resistors, one of the 1 ohm resistors. Remember, the other one is to the left of it. So I'm looking at the current through one of the valves. That's gone back to my multimeter set on 200 millivolt scale and it's reading 39.5 millivolts which is which because it's a 1 ohm resistor is 39.5 milliamps Let's go across to our meter 39.5 milliamps so that's perfect you can measure the um, bias current on this amplifier with an ordinary multimeter clipped across one of these two resistors well, not a lot more to say on that one. That was how to bias the Fender Supersonic using two methods. One, a bias meter, and the other method is to hook on with an ordinary multimeter set onto a 200 millivolt scale, measuring across either one of those 1 ohm resistors. You can measure across both of them if you want to check that both of the valves are a matched pair. Don't sweat a few milliamps difference between them. Three or four is fine, even five is fine. Um, a big difference in mismatching of the power tubes would cause a little bit of distortion on the signal, and we wouldn't want that on a guitar amplifier now, would we? Okay, hope you've enjoyed it. I'll catch you next time, and thanks for watching.